An estimated 6% of babies worldwide are born with congenital anomalies or birth defects. These defects may have significant impact on the child because of the long-term disability that it may cause. My name is Dr. Masi Korir and on this episode of Health Digest, Gloria Milimu takes a look at hypospadias, a congenital anomaly where the urethra opens up underneath the penile shaft. The birth of a baby is often accompanied by an array of emotions and feelings of anxiety. Ideally, every expectant mother looks forward to giving birth to a healthy baby after a successful gestation period. However, when the infant is diagnosed with a birth defect, especially one that the parents have never heard of, it heightens the feelings of anxiety, shame and even blame. Such was the case for this mother of two, whom we shall call Nancy to protect her identity. An abnormal spraying of urine by her then six months old son was the red flag. It would later be revealed that her bundle of joy had a congenital birth defect known as hypospadias. Just like many parents of newborns diagnosed with this condition, she had neither had nor witnessed it in her family. Husband whom we will also conceal his identity and name Cliff also shared her concerns. She joined at to the kitab at a good to new buy at a qua guinea babies just came up with my son because took a new Ordinarily, all parents think about the future of their children, and for those whose child is diagnosed with a birth defect, they dread the impact it may have on their future. Dr. Tim Jumbi, a pediatric urologist at the Kenyatta National Hospital, explains what the penile defect is. Hypospadias is a birth defect that affects boys. And basically, uh, you have this tube that connects the bladder to the outside of the body, and it's supposed to transmit urine from the bladder out of the body. Now, ideally, this tube has a hole at the tip of the penis in boys. In hypospadias, this hole forms abnormally. So common is hypospadias among children that in a week, Dr. Jumbi sees up to five patients and between 50 to 70 in a year. But this number could even be higher if only parents were not reluctant and shy away from discussing penal defects for fear of isolation. Similarly, lack of awareness about the condition remains the main barrier to access to treatment. Hypospadias does not have one known cause. So in medicine, we use the term multifactorial 
that means that there are a lot of factors that come into play to cause this birth defect called hypospadias. And just to give you some examples of a few, uh, there is something we call genetic uh, predisposition. And that means that you might be in a family lineage of people who have hypospadias. And it so happens that a boy can be affected with hypospadias because a member in the family was also affected by the same condition. So that's number one. Number two is the environment in which the child is developing while inside the mother's womb. So when we look and take history from mothers of babies who have hypospadias, we notice that some of them work in areas where there are industries and these industries might be emitting certain chemicals that can lead to birth defects, not only hypospadias, but other birth defects. Some of the mothers might be working in uh, uh, areas where they're using pesticides, where they're using cleaning detergents, and some of these things, when you inhale them, they can cause some birth defects, some of which might be hypospadias. Some diseases an expectant mother is diagnosed with can also predispose her unborn child to birth defects, explains the urologist. For example, hypospadias has been seen in mothers who have diabetes, uh, some of them who have what we call placental insufficiency. This means that the placenta does not function uh, normally. And of course, this will affect the baby who's developing inside the mother's womb. So to summarize this, there is not that one cause that you can link it to hypospadias. It's a lot of factors that come in together to cause this birth defect. There are different types of hypospadias, and these include subcoronal, where the opening of the urethra is located somewhere near the head of the penis. The other type is also known as mid-shaft, where the opening of the urethra is located along the shaft, and penoscrotal, where the urethra is located where the penis and scrotum meet. Hypospadias is diagnosed at birth. Usually, when the child is born, the child is examined from head to toe. And a very good examiner will be able to pick hypospadias at birth because what you're looking for is whether the tip of the tube is coming from the tip of the penis. So you can diagnose it at birth. Many a times, parents of children diagnosed with a birth defect are concerned about treatment and its outcome. Although birth defects do not necessarily require a surgical procedure, the main mode of treatment for hypospadias is surgery. There are very many uh, factors that we consider when we are trying to treat this condition. Number one is the severity of the defect. So you can have a mild defect, you can have a moderate kind of defect, or you can have a severe defect. Uh, if I was to use my finger 
as uh, a penis, and now you're thinking about this finger as having hypospadia. So if you have the tip here, urine is coming out from the tip. That's a normally uh, 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 developed penis. For a hypospadic penis, urine will come out from anywhere along this shaft. So if it comes out from somewhere here, that's a mild defect. If it comes out from somewhere here, that's a moderate defect. Sometimes it comes out, urine comes out from somewhere here, and this area is just around where the testicles are, and that's what we call a severe defect. Now the management, or rather treatment, of this condition is dependent on whether it is a severe defect or it is a mild defect. Now, when we talk about the timing of surgery, usually we want to start treatment of these children at about six months. Now, why six months? Number one, we usually give some time for the child to develop both growth and nutritionally. And this helps us during our surgery because very young children do not tolerate surgery as good as an older child. So we give ourselves around six months as a cutoff. Number two, some of these children will actually require more than one surgery. And so it is our intent that before the child starts going to school, we have completed the necessary surgeries that should be offered to these particular children. Dr. Jumbi says a very severe defect would require about two to three surgeries, also known as a staged approach to management. In the first surgery, you want to correct some part of the defect. Then you come to a second surgery and correct another part of the defect. Then finally, you complete it by doing the last surgery, which will now make everything uh, uh, near normal as possible. So it is a staged kind of management where you do a stage one surgery, then you come and do a stage two surgery, and if need be, you can actually do another stage three surgery. And this is dependent on the type of defect that you have. For boys with hypospadias, it is very important that the parents and the healthcare providers understand that circumcision must not be performed in such boys. The reason is the skin that is cut away during circumcision is actually used during the reconstruction process of these boys. And so when you cut off the skin, then you leave us surgeons with a very, you know, hard time because that skin is actually what we need to reconstruct the deformed penises of these boys. So the message here, please do not circumcise the boys. Congenital anomalies can contribute to long-term disability, which may have an impact on the patient's life, and with hypospedias, lack of treatment can even cost one his generation. However, with successful treatment of hypospedias, most males can have normal urination and reproduction. When this uh, uh, you know, boy is a little child, you might not see anything wrong with the child. And indeed, nothing is wrong with the child. So the child will be able to urinate normally. And the child will be able to go through their all day-to-day -day activities quite normally. Now the problem starts happening later in life. Number one, the urine does not flow normally. Remember, 
the out, you know, the opening of what we call the urethra is not normally positioned. And so when urine starts to flow, for boys, you're supposed to stand and your urine is supposed to be deflected forward. So for these particular boys, urine is deflected downwards. So if you imagine a boy standing and urinating, the boy will actually be urinating on his legs, okay? Because the deflection of the urine is abnormal. That's number one. Number two, when these uh, boys get a little bit older and they start having erections, some of these erections are not straight because some of these boys' penises are formed with a curvature and the curvature faces like this. And so you can imagine a penis uh, which looks like this erecting. It actually goes down instead of up. So it will not be normal. And what are the effects of such? When these particular boys become adults, they have problems with sexual intercourse because number one, they cannot penetrate the partner and number two, they cannot deposit the semen into the partner's vagina. And so they have issues when it comes to fertility and whatnot. Just like any other major surgery, hypospedia surgery may not be affordable for everyone. Though, with an insurance cover, the burden of cost of treatment may be lifted off the shoulder of the family with a patient that requires this procedure. Healthcare costs are varied depending on which facility uh, you visit. Uh, I work uh, in a government uh, institution. And if you have the National Hospital Insurance Fund, that is one fund that is able to meet the costs uh, of this uh, surgery in full. And that is one of the things that we would want to encourage each and every single patient to, uh, to get because it really helps with their, with their funding. So if you are to get this uh, service in uh, the government institution, it is of course cheaper than the private institutions. So it's very hard to peg a certain figure uh, for this uh, kind of surgery uh, because it is dependent on where you will get the services from. The urologist also advocates for early treatment to help avert the psychological trauma that most of hypospedias patients go through. As all this is happening between the child being born and them getting to adulthood, there is a lot of psychological stigma that is associated with such boys. And these are the boys who have developmental uh, issues. These are the boys who have behavioral issues because all along they know that they are different. And so part of the treatment for these children is to try and correct this anomaly as early as possible so that by the time the child starts to grow, they actually feel like a normal boy. Hearing that your infant has a birth defect can be distressing. However, early diagnosis and treatment can help improve their life. Gloria Milimo, KTN News.